Diamonds and Lemons is a bonus Adventure Time episode that has no bearing on the canonical plot of this show, and as a product tie-in, my only desire from this episode was for it to be a fun time, even for those who have zero interest in Minecraft like myself. And a fun time? I think it most certainly was. Before I get into the details though, this video actually has a sponsor. This review is brought to you by Adventure Time Amino, a free social networking app that's perfect for interacting with other fans of the show in a myriad of ways. Besides discussing Adventure Time, you can also partake in viewing or sharing fan art, participate in polls, join live chats or role plays, and even take user-created quizzes that test your memory of various minutiae in the Adventure Time world. While the show is concluding, the enthusiasm of the fans will continue far into the foreseeable future, and Adventure Time Amino is a great place to express that enthusiasm with others in the community. If you do decide to give Adventure Time Amino a whirl, I've got some drawings of Finn wearing the Jake suit on there, so check those out, and also make sure to vote in a poll I made about which Candy Kingdom hater you're most excited to see in action during the series finale. Thank you, Adventure Time Amino. Alright, so let's get back to the episode, Diamonds and Lemons. I'm sure a lot of people had the question of why, and why now? Adventure Time is one month away from being over, and while Minecraft is still immensely popular, it's mostly seen as a trend of the past at this point. It's not inaccurate to say this crossover feels several years too late to the game. The Adventure Time mashup pack for Minecraft was far more recent, but even that released over a year ago. Well, Adam Muto, the showrunner of Adventure Time, has an answer to that, and it's actually very simple. This is when the opportunity came up, and the Adventure Time crew took it. In an interview for the Minecraft website, Muto states that his personal reasons for doing the tie-in was simply to have the Adventure Time crew enjoy creating one more project together. They just wanted to work on more of the show, by whatever means necessary. And knowing that, I think it's awesome that we get a fun bonus episode, even if it's required to be Minecraft-based to exist. Mojang, the company that owns Minecraft, actually didn't want the episode's art style to look exactly like the game, which I am so thankful for. Really great decision on their part, because I think the final design looks amazing. As I said earlier, I don't play Minecraft, and I actually don't care whatsoever for Minecraft's visual style, but these designs created by Joe Sparrow, these are something I can totally get behind. It's very much worth mentioning, though, that there were multiple designs being considered in the brainstorming stage. Alex Senwald's concept art was much closer to the actual game, with its focus on geometric shapes. It looks more like a video game than it does a cartoon. The concept art of Matt Cummings looks like Adventure Time done in a different art style, but it doesn't even particularly remind me of Minecraft, although I do quite like it. If I saw this image with zero context, I would figure this might be from another guest animated episode or something. It's much softer around the edges than the art direction by Joe Sparrow which was ultimately chosen, and I think it was an excellent choice. I feel this art direction is a brilliant amalgamation of the feel of Minecraft, but with all the essence of Adventure Time. I think it captures both worlds spectacularly, and it was seeing these designs a while back that actually sold me on this crossover being acceptable, when originally I was extremely apprehensive about it all. I've talked about the style a good bit now, let's actually dig into the episode's content. I got a bit of a Grable's styled vibe from this episode, because it has multiple small hijinks based events involving different characters. It starts with Finn fetching a bucket of water for Jake, and I was already enjoying the manner in which video game logic was implemented in a natural way. That goes for most of the Minecraft based jokes. There's not a big focus placed on the game mechanics, they're instead treated as regular old, normal day occurrences in this world. I'm sure people who are fans of Minecraft can get some amusing chuckles at being familiar with the references, but for a normie like myself, it was fun to learn about the mechanics by seeing them happen in such a casual manner. I think the episode was very smartly crafted in that regard. Fans of Minecraft can enjoy these references, while non-fans can be intrigued and interested in getting an understanding for how this world operates. 
There was only one single reference that I felt was out of place. When Jake throws diamonds into the lava to destroy them, he shouts, Vanilla Nomad! Vanilla Nomad! Vanilla Nomad! Vanilla Nomad! For a while, I couldn't even decipher what he was supposed to be saying, but I think it's Vanilla No Mods, which refers to running the original version of a video game, the vanilla version, and that you don't have any external modifications set up for it. This isn't specific to just Minecraft, although maybe there's some meta memery going on that I'm not aware of? I don't know. Like I said though, that's the only example of a reference that felt entirely lost on me. The episode was overall pretty great from a comedy perspective. They packed in tons of jokes relating to Minecraft, but there was also plenty of Adventure Time styled humor that was entirely independent of the game. A little lump destined for something big. Just like your butt. <laughs> Good one, but no. You can't just hit something with a shovel and expect it to do your bidding. Yeah, you can. There was one moment in particular where Finex hits the scene in a way that had been going, Oh no, my sweet boy, what are you doing? See you later, Finn. Alright, my ladies. But then immediately after the panic, I realized it was all worth it and for the best, because then he says this. My lemon. I don't think I've ever had an emotional 180 that fast and intense before. I went from dreadful panic right into audible laughter. There were plenty of hybrid jokes too, with the most notable example being Finn writing Mr. Pig. You know, you could just tell me where to go. I could tell this was an obvious reference to Minecraft. I looked it up just to be 100% sure, and the game does indeed allow you to ride pigs, but it's also quite a comical situation all on its own, independent of the video game context, and it would be a hoot to witness even in a regular episode of Adventure Time. The Melemon bit was probably my favorite joke of the episode, but Lumpy Space Princess provided a close second. After Finn's prolonged, uh, lack of a face-off with the Enderman, which felt like Minecraft took Slenderman and then gave it the properties of the Weeping Angels from Doctor Who, but reversed, LSP comes to the rescue by being really annoying. Haha, <laughs> sure. Ew, you're all smelly and wet! Get out of here! Fair enough. But come back after you've showered. That really tickled my funny bone. I just love interactions between Finn and LSP so much. Okay, so I've been discussing the jokes a lot, but in a non-canonical episode that's meant to be lighthearted fun, I do feel that's where most of the enjoyment primarily stems from. But with that done, let's actually talk about the characters and the small amount of plot that was contained within Diamonds and Lemons. There was the Gravel Gang, who were all about griefing, which from context you can tell just means causing trouble for others, mostly through property damage of some kind. But griefing didn't actually play any major role in the episode. LSP inadvertently helps Finn with no relation whatsoever to her gang, and Ice King steals an item from Finn with no real consequences of any kind to the larger story threads. Originally, there was a small story thread involving Ice King, but the content had to be cut for time. Ice King would try to grief the treehouse, only to be chased off by Bimo, who ends up wrecking the treehouse himself. And knowing this, it becomes obvious the Ice King Enderman interaction was the alternative they had to settle for to make the timeline fit. And that's why it feels so pasted in. Marceline and Princess Bubblegum both serve pretty important roles in this episode. They help both Finn and Lemon Grab, but they don't actually have a story thread of their own. They just happen to be there making a windmill. Just two gals, spending some quality time together in the process of acquiring bone meal. Mr. Pig is there for the comedy, but Tree Trunks is actually directly involved in the outcome to Lemon Grab's story, so let's talk about the lemon component of diamonds and lemons. Lemon Grab tries to plant a lemon tree, with some help finally gets it to grow, but the outcome is an apple tree instead. He's devastated, but Tree Trunks was plumb out of apples and is delighted at the result. For providing the apples, Lemon Grab requests pies. Pie me! Pie me for my apples! 
The story thread was a pretty straightforward representation of the proverb, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Of course, in this case, it was more like, when life refuses to give you lemons, get tree trunks to make you apple pie. It's short, sweet, and very to the point, and I don't think I have all that much else to say about it. It was a fun little portrayal of the sentiment behind the proverb. Even when things don't go the way you expect, you can still reap the benefits of your hard work. Now, let's finally discuss the diamond component of Diamonds and Lemons. Finn feels Jake tossing the diamonds into lava is a massive waste for all the hard work needed to acquire them. Finn goes on a quest to find a better use for a diamond, and Princess Bubblegum makes a firework out of it because she knows exactly what Jake's mind is like. I'm positive Jake will appreciate it for both its fleeting sensation of beauty and its false sense of purpose. She's got Jake down to a T. He's all about that sort of creative expression. Jake would totally dig Andy Goldsworthy, who makes art out of natural elements that's meant to fall apart with time, capturing the beauty in the limbo between creation and the inevitability of destruction. Although Goldsworthy's work is far more slower paced and relaxing than the destructive wonder Jake exudes in this episode, Jake is multifaceted. He's shown he can be very content with leisurely observing the world around him, and would be totally down with watching an art piece made of ice melt over the course of the day. And yes, consider this a plug for the documentary on Andy Goldsworthy titled Rivers and Tides. It's a really nice and relaxing film. Go check it out. Anyhow, plugging stuff aside, Finn comes back to Jake after an arduous day and has an epiphany. Beauty is in the hard work itself and the, oftentimes false, sense of purpose we feel when doing it. It's a fleeting sensation that drives us to repeat our actions in order to capture it again. That's a fun little commentary that extends to art and even life in general, but of course, it's primarily meant to be an examination of why some people find the repetitive nature of the Minecraft video game so fun and addicting. It's a little bit of throwing shade as well, with that false sense of purpose comment, which I very much appreciate. I absolutely love how Finn's statement makes absolute sense in the context of the episode's story, but is also a clear dig at Minecraft, while also being applicable to the nature of the human condition and our drive to find purpose and happiness from the things around us. Adventure Time still packs some of that depth it's well known for at this point, even in a hijinks-based episode that's a product tie-in. The fact that the fireworks don't even go as planned is just further icing on the cake, and continues the same theme from Lemon Grab's story thread. It's about enjoying the unplanned and the unexpected, even if it's not what you originally wanted. That may as well be meta-level commentary on this episode even existing in the first place for us viewers. I never expected this crossover, I never asked for it, but damn it, I had an awesome time with it. Diamonds and Lemons was great. I am so pleased with how this episode turned out, with how accessible and fun it feels. It's simply a joyous standalone Adventure Time experience that reminds us to enjoy the hard work we do and have fun with the surprises we may get along the way.